My name is Natalie V, and I fence on the U.S. team. About a year ago, I had an MCL meniscus tear that was so deep and so bad, um, I thought my career might be over. It was two months before Olympic qualifiers, and I was looking for something to help me heal. He shoots him, and then he's hypnotized into being completely honest. And then he kind of goes robotic, and he goes, I have to admit, you know, yes, your, your floating bed does exist. Go to this address here. The floating bed helped my body to heal so fast that I was really curious. So I asked John to come over to my house in Topanga for an interview. All right, so. Hi. Hi. So nice to see you. I know. Round two. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to my room right now. Okay, so we're in my wall, in my room. I had to put it on pause for a second so that I could make my bed. Three, two, one. All right, I brought us some tea. Oh, like I might have served it to you last time. I also put some, a sprig of rosemary in there. Cool. So I'm kind of wondering, like, maybe from the beginning, like, how did you get interested in health? Well, um, as a child, I uh, had some health issues from birth that I had to deal with. And I certainly made it worse because I was uh, basically a wild child and I had wrecks and did all kind of crazy bad mm -hmm. things. And eventually I realized that if I wanted to survive, because I really had hurt myself in many ways, that I was going to have to learn a lot about health. And um, my dad was a doctor, but my mom was a nutritionalist. And I decided to kind of split the difference by looking up holistic things that yeah. would be good but also to demand that they be scientifically measurable. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I did food products, nutritional stuff uh, for many years, but I would do it not just by randomly saying, eat this herb because it's good, but looking up what are the metabolic pathways involved when you eat ginseng herb? Yeah. Or what does this other herb do to you actually? And in the course of being not just in the newspaper, but on PubMed, yeah. real science yeah. um, websites and, and libraries, I kept seeing studies about the benefits of motion. And it turns out, kind of as you pointed out, all modern people are deficient in motion. Yeah. Except for athletes who get almost enough. But if you look at our ancestors, I mean, they chopped wood and carried water. Yeah, they were in constant movements. Yes, all yeah. the time. And it was a hard life. But because of that, they got circulation that we do not yeah. get. So what I realized was that, um, Everybody in modern society, virtually, even to some extent athletes, is deficient in motion. You could literally consider motion like another nutrient that we're not getting enough of. And I go into that further later, but I realized that not only did then I want to incorporate more motion into my life, but since nobody has time, you don't have time to meditate and go to the gym mm -hmm, and do things, mm -hmm. that I wanted to add that motion in at night when I was asleep. Mm -hmm because then I would kill two birds with one stone. And that turned out to be uh, a lucky idea that I had because um, now with our floating bed, you can get this increased lymphatic circulation all night while you're resting. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know that since I have been sleeping in the bed, it's been how long, a week and a half? Yeah. A week and a half, although I was gone for about two or three days. And it was really weird to be in a static bed again. Yeah. <laughs> I went away for a tournament and I'm like, oh, this is what it feels like to be in a bed that just like doesn't move. This is crazy. But since I've been sleeping in the in the in the floating bed, I've noticed that the bags under my eyes have gone away. I've noticed that my my um, my knee hasn't been inflamed. And I tore my meniscus about seven, almost eight months ago. And I've been dealing with chronic inflammation, like chronic inflammation deep inside my joint where I haven't even been able to fully, uh, I haven't been able to fully bend my knees. So when I do yoga, I, I haven't been able to sit on my heels wow. in, in eight months. Yeah. And since I've been sleeping in the floating bed, it's like, it's all been, it's all been draining so much so that I even, I woke up the other day feeling like, wow, this, this almost feels like raw. Like this is crazy. Like I haven't felt this in, in like eight months. It's almost a year, you know? And I did yoga the other day and I sat on my heels for the first time, but I've noticed that I have not had a single, um, a, a single battle with like inflammation in the knee. And I'm wondering if you can speak to that, like the mechanics of it, like how it works, sure. the movement, like how, how that affects the lymphatic system. And, you know, increasing lymphatic, in lymphatic flow is a literal panacea, which means it's good for everything, overall health. So um, 
what I realized early on, there were two realizations. I'll, I'll mention this one first. The first one was motion increases lymphatic flow because our body's plumbing is just like the plumbing in our house. Mm -hmm. The drain system in your kitchen has no pump on it. Yeah. It's just gravity. So if that drain is even slightly stopped up, then the bad stuff from the food, all the toxins just sit there and fester all night mm -hmm. until you speed up the drain mm -hmm. or empty it. Well, in your body, um, amazingly, the lymphatic system takes the place of that drain system mm -hmm. in your sink. The lymphatic system also has no pump. So it depends on motion to drive circulation so your body eliminates all these toxins. Totally separate system, lymphatic system, and when you, for example, are motionless and you're no longer taking out the garbage, which is why when you wake up in the morning you're stiff yeah. and anytime you have any inflammation, one of the best things you can do is add motion to your life. And that can be active motion, of course, like exercise or moving around, mm -hmm. but also passive motion uh, in many ways is equally good, although it doesn't stimulate muscle growth, it does get rid of the toxins in right. your cells. Like, why would we evolve to have this lymphatic system that needs a ton of movement and it doesn't have its own pump? And I realized like, oh, we actually came from the water. Yeah. And when we were in the water, we were getting that m natural movement. And you know, I've even been thinking like, maybe that's why we instinctively all want to cradle babies and we want to rock them. Yeah. It's because we're moving their lymphatic system. Cause they don't have their own pump. They're not moving their muscles yet. Right. In fact, um, if you think about it, a mother with a, uh, an embryo, that embryo is floating in the in, in amniotic fluid in yeah. the stomach. So that fluid allows the baby to move back and forth freely. And it's the perfect pendulum motion, which um, is the unique feature of this bed, which makes it stand out from other devices. So the floating motion turns out to be the best because it's the only motion that tells you you're safe to relax. Mm. And that's a twofold issue. One, it's a memory from that time, even though you don't, you're not conscious of right. it, but you remember being in that safe, warm environment where you're floating in this fluid, where everything is great, and that fluid is moving you in a way that increases lymphatic flow. Mm -hmm. To a person, every mother knows this. If you rock a baby, they go to sleep faster, they have deeper sleep, mm. and it's the same principle. They need more lymphatic flow, and they like that. Whereas when you sleep on a static bed with no motion, all of those toxins are just sitting there, stewing away, chewing away, eating at your insides until you get up again eight hours later or move. You know, that's why we toss and turn at night because you'll have no lymphatic flow, and finally your brain gets this message oh, I have to move because I've got to get mm. this flow. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take you guys with me. We're gonna go down there and look at how this works. The centrifuge, can you explain it? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna show why our bed uniquely does not create problematic waves in your inner ear, which would tell you that you are in danger. I'll do it during the demo, which okay. I have a prop, which yeah. will allow me to show how it works. Okay, do you wanna do it in the backyard? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna turn this camera around. See, I'm a pretty lucky girl to have the inventor of my bed <laughs> at my house. And to live here. And to live here in beautiful Topanga. Okay, so what do you got for us? Okay, in your inner ear, there are three canals which tell you when you're moving. They're called the vestibular canals, just for the record. And everyone knows about them experientially because if you move slightly, this fluid in these canals sloshes around and that tells you how much you move, which direction, up or down. It tells you everything about motion. And that system is a billion years old, designed to keep you safe. When I was thinking about the floating bed and why all of this lymphatic circulation was a good thing, but why then didn't the water bed catch on? And why haven't hammocks caught on? And particularly, why didn't beds hanging from four ropes catch on? And then one day I remembered something from being a child, which was, I remember an older person always show some boy this magic trick, which is that if you have a bucket of water and you have any water in it or liquid, you can swing that bucket over your head and the water doesn't spill out. I don't know if you can see this in slow motion, but. Any emotional bed will increase lymphatic flow. 
So that's a good thing, including the water bed and the hammock. So in that one way, they're good for you, but the downside is a more negative thing, uh, namely that you become anxious on those beds. So that's counterproductive to sleep, and that means you don't go into the slow wave sleep. Uh, you don't get sleep spindles, which are little EEG signatures that your body's healing itself nearly as often as you do when you're in a pendulum bed. So when we go to sleep, we want to feel safe and we want to have the slowest EEGs we can get because that's when the body heals itself and that is also the most creative. So even though in a waterbed or a hammock you're getting that flow, your sympathetic nervous system is not getting the signal you're safe. So again, in the waterbed, when you're moving, you're getting these chaotic waves which are going back and forth. So yes, lymphatic flow, yes. Relaxation, no. Now, a hammock is a unique case because a hammock kind of splits the difference. It's not as bad as a waterbed in terms of, um, you know, creating the chaotic waves and making you anxious, but there's still two drawbacks. One, because they sag, they're not good for your back and mm -hmm. not really good to stretch out on, whereas a floating bed is designed to be completely flat and large so multiple people can sleep in it together at the same time if you want, or you can use it as a sofa, it's all comfortable because you've got a big flat bed. But the second thing that's unique about um, the hammock that is not so good is that in, in engineering terms, we always want to say we want the lowest center of gravity for all the weight. So when you're in a hammock, the suspension points are here and you're very close to that. You're only a little bit lower. So your body also, because of this, recognizes that you're in something unstable, like because you can flip out of a hammock. I'm sure most people have done that or almost done it because uh, you're not stable. But in a floating bed, we have the perfect situation because the suspension point is at the very top and the weight is at the very bottom. And so that motion is more stable and mm -hmm. that motion again tells your inner ear, vestibular system, that you're safe and you can't fall out of a floating bed. In fact, um, if your floating bed was mounted in such an impossible way that you could do a full 360 loop-de-loop -loop in the bed, you would never fall out of it. So it's not only true that when you're swinging these small amounts that um, it's more relaxing to be in this bed, but if you could do this in the bed, you would never fall out, and if there were another person beside you, you would never even bump into them because your position is fixed to the bed. Mm -hmm. It's not fixed to any other reference point. So heavy person, light person, right by each other, no bumping into each other. So it makes it really comfortable for couples. Yeah. Sleeping.